So what's up guys? So today I wanted to make a video going over metabolic adaptation and why I think it's such an important concept to understand for maximizing fat loss. Now I'm sure many of you guys know that in order to effectively burn fat, you need to be eating less calories than you burn in a day, right? However, this is not what your body wants to do. It wants to be in a positive energy balance where you're actually eating you know, a little more calories than what you burn in a day so that your body can burn fat, or excuse me, store fat. Now the reason for this is many, many years ago, back in the uh, days of the early Homo sapiens, you know, they would go through periods of feast and famine where, you know, let's say they would maybe kill a deer or something and they would have, you know, a lot of food for like the next one to three days. And then, so they would feast on that and then after that they would, you know, maybe go like a few days without eating food or at least eating like a big meal. Now this is... This is okay for their bodies because they would store body fat and then their bodies would use that fat as energy to get them through the next few days. And, you know, they didn't have the luxury of being able to just go to your kitchen and make a sandwich or go down the street to a restaurant. But our bodies don't necessarily know that we're able to do that. So as you get further and further into a diet, your body makes hormonal changes, right, where it'll decrease important hormones like testosterone, decreases insulin, decreases T3, which is the thyroid hormone, and also decreases leptin, which is a really important fat burning hormone. And then it also will increase cortisol and increase um, ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone. That's basically the hormone that tells you that you're hungry and your body's like, yo, let's get some food in this bitch. So what these hormones do is they basically provide they kind of like in a way regulate your metabolism and they provide feedback about energy availability which is basically how much body fat you have and also energy intake which is how much food you're eating now as you progress into your diet and your calories get lower and lower your body basically becomes kind of like resistant to body fat and it's actually wants to store body fat now the only way to um, continue burning fat is by lowering your calories and this you know, slows down your metabolism more and more, your body makes more severe hormonal changes to the point where, you know, your body's basically like in survival mode. Your body's like, holy shit, you know, this person's not eating, what's going on? Like they must be, there must be like a huge food shortage. So, you know, it just doesn't make sense for your body to want to keep burning fat because fat is your body's, you know, like survival fuel source. Like when it's not eating, that's what your body uses. And when your body fat gets really, really low, that's a really bad sign for your body. So <clears throat> over time, you basically get to the point where your body is trying to not only preserve body fat, but actually promote food intake and so that it can store body fat. So, you know, I mentioned earlier that it increases ghrelin, right? That's the hormone that makes you really hungry, or at least tells you that you're hungry. So this is increased and, you know, basically takes longer for you to get full and you don't stay full as long. So I'm sure if any of you have, you know, dieted before, you know, like you, let's say you eat a really big meal and you're like, holy shit, I'm not even like, I'm, st I'm still hungry. That I didn't even do anything. Or, you know, let's say you eat a big meal and then you're full for a little while. And then like an hour later, you're just starving again. This is basically your body's way of saying like, holy crap, we need to get some food. This is not good because your body, you know, thinks that you're in like a survival situation. Now, <clears throat> so I think understanding this is really important. And you know, basically the main takeaway is that the longer you diet, um, the harder it is to burn fat. You know, over time it starts to slow down because your body wants to maintain body fat and your metabolism slows down and your body tries to get you to eat. Now, how can you use this information to maximize fat loss? So, <laughs> When going on a fat loss diet, I think it's really, really important for people to take little breaks um, throughout their diet. Now, and by break, I mean like where you increase your calories and do like an extended refeed rather than the typical just like one refeed a week. And this has a few benefits. First of all, by, you know, doing an extended refeed where you're, you're eating a lot more calories for a week or so, um, you're basically tricking your body into thinking that you know, this period of famine is over and now you're feasting again, you know, because you're constantly eating a lot more food. So your body's like, oh, like we're chill. It's all good now. You know, I can increase metabolism, increase fat burning. And another reason is 
also just from a psychological aspect because you know when you're dieting it's really stressful it's stressful on your body and it's also stressful just on like your mental state right because you know when you're dieting you get really hungry you want to eat everything in sight but you can't and you get really bad cravings and this is you know definitely takes a toll on just your general well-being right so by going on an extended refeed you're not only recharging your metabolism but you're also recharging just your you know your mental state so that you can just feel like totally refreshed and then start dieting again now as far as how I would recommend doing this. Um, as far as I know, there's not really any research on this, so I'm merely just making recommendations based off assumptions. But what I would suggest is, you know, let's say you you diet really really consistently for about six to eight weeks, and then you take like a week to maybe a week and a half off, where you spend a few days, you know, slowly increasing your calories up to maintenance, and then you spend like I don't know five days to five to eight days eating at a maintenance or slightly above a maintenance. Now, one thing to keep in mind when doing this is, you know, like I said, I'm just I'm just making assumptions here. And so it's really important that you monitor your body and the changes really well. You know, you need to monitor how your weight changes and how monitor how much you increase your calories. Because, you know, having this information will help you <clears throat> um, in the future when you do future refeeds because you kind of know like how your body's going to respond and how you should do it because like I said earlier you know your body wants to your body is trying to um, store body fat so if you do a refeed and you kind of go too crazy it might be kind of productive where you'll store too much body fat if you you know increase your calories too high so I think that's something that's really important to keep in mind is that you kind of monitor the changes that your body makes and you monitor your food intake now, another thing to keep in mind is uh, not to to abuse doing extended refeeds. You know, like if you're, let's say you're dieting for a few weeks and you're kind of getting sick of it and you're like, oh, that I heard that one guy talk about how I should take a, um, you know, extended refeed and you kind of go on a refeed without really earning it because um, I think that can really, uh, really hinder your fat loss. So I think it's really important to, you know, be dieting for, at least six to eight weeks and then do a refeed you know and make sure that you 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 have a plan of how long you're gonna refeed and you don't go over it because it's really easy to be like oh, I'll just do one more day one more day one more day and then you know the longer you stay in that refeed it could you know be taking so many steps back where it's just counterproductive and you're not appropriately utilizing it to where it will actually be effective so those are some important things to keep in mind um, I think that's all I want to say for this video. Um, but anyways, thank you guys for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.